Happy podcast day. Happy podcast Thank day. Thank you. Thank you, Somicron. It is April Fool's Day in my hemisphere still. Yes, I've long since grown accustomed to April Fool's being like a 48-hour event. Correct. Yeah. It is, thanks to the internet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very powerful, the internet. It is, yeah. It can extend stuff like April Fool's Day. Mm-hmm. Yep. But no one's benefit. <laughs> Correct. Correct uh, indeed. I don't know. Like, it's super annoying, too, because I think over the years, like, brands have gotten more into the April Fool's thing. Sure. And I saw a couple things that were like, oh, Disney's going to buy this really famous ski resort. And it's like, that's not funny. Like, <laughs> you're just advertising at this point. You're just advertising <laughs> both of your things. Knock it off. Get out of here, brand. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you saw Warhammer April Fools. I did. I was just looking at it to send it to you. It's a Wonderful. you can buy a warp stone jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's funnier than what I was thinking. All right. Uh, so if you want a twenty-four carat warp stone ring, um, you can. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yes, I'll accept your stupid cookies. All right. I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty. It's infused with the power of the warp. Um, yeah. I'm not so sure if it's bad. That. <laughs> yeah. It's bad and it's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. People would buy that without a doubt. Mm hmm. Yeah. Huh. Maybe they're just testing the waters. So they're like, if we get enough people that are like, I'd actually buy that, then they'll make it. Did I get into the emerald industry? What do you think? Did I just get plastic yeah, I rocks? Mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fake it. Mm. I mean, maybe do a little bit higher quality than just plastic, but I don't know what there is between, like, plastic and actual gems. Mm. Hmm. I am no jeweler. No, neither am I. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Anywho's. We got some StarCraft to talk about. We've got some uh, Warhammer to talk about. No real surprise to anyone, probably. Probably not. Uh, StarCraft? It should just be more group stages from GSL. Second yeah. Group was it just a, uh... Yeah, it was the second. What did I watch yeah. today? Yeah, so second round of group stages, group A, I think is what I watched today. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Yeah, a lot of Protoss and Terran, no Zerg to be seen in this group. Yes. That's okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> entertainingly, they did release the new patch before the second round of group stages, which mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to remember if they've ever released a balance patch in the middle of a GSL before. Just I... like, yeah, we don't care. GSL's halfway done. <laughs> <laughs> Toss it in there. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they have. Um, it's concern not just concerning is all. They could have waited like two weeks and probably been fine. Well, yeah. Um, anyway. April 11th is when the finals is? Yeah, two weeks. Yeah, I mean, the patch came out like yeah, a little over two weeks, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, fair. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, they could have. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Didn't have to, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> I mean, obviously, no. <laughs> there is no law about what they did. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, it's just, I don't know. I just feel like if I'm Maru, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, mm -hmm. I've been practicing on this patch and these maps for months and months and months now. I know them intimately. I know what I need to do. And now you're giving me, like, four days to figure out the weirdness around the Cyclone and some Protoss stuff. And sentries do bonus to light now. What's that all about? <laughs> And all the new maps, and and I have to go up against like classic here and hero for heaven's sakes. I mean, the map I would pool be for mad. GSL didn't change, so that like they didn't have to change the maps. Oh, all right, right, right. That's um, fair. They were already doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's all. Sure. If he's mad, if Maru's mad, okay. Um, if or people, any of the players that are still in GSL, I'm sure one of them's like, "Are you? Come on, come on, guys." Yeah, 
Sure. Um, I'm going to hold to it. That's why Beyond lost in his group. Um, Absolutely. Yep, yeah, without a, a doubt. He couldn't adjust to the, the four or five changes that are meaningful this patch and uh, just lost. That's that's why. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's not his fault. 100%. No, definitely not. Nope. Yeah. So, I mean, we did end up getting a nice, uh, nice racial balance here out of Group A. Both Hero and Maru came through. Classic and Bion are left True. behind. True. Holy smokes. Were you able to watch these games? I watched some of these games. Okay. I don't remember which. <laughs> so, specifically, the first game in the group was Maru and Classic. Is that the one and with it... the big nuke? Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's all that. That's all that clipped. Oh, um, my gosh. Yeah, so it's this big macro PVT. Maru's playing his butt off. He's kind of got Classic contained... But like contained on five bases, so it's a weird contain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's trying to like kind of just bring the hammer down and take Classic out of this thing. And Classic's defending. He's got Tempests and Storm and Stalkers and all sorts of great stuff. And a Mothership's in there. Mm -hmm. And then Mara's like, nuke up the ramp? Question mark. <laughs> I'm just going to throw this out there. Surely it won't land, but uh, yeah, it's worth a shot, right? This mm -hmm. would certainly end the game if it connected. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I watched the uh, the army supply go from like oh. 126 to like 54. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and tasteless after the game was over because that ended the game. Right, like, that was it. Yeah, like a classic's entire army took a nuke, and then Mara's like, "Oh, cool, I can go up this ramp now." Bam. Mm -hmm. uh, Tasteless is like, look, now, uh, over the years, I've introduced people to StarCraft, and they love the idea of the nuke, right? When they hear nuclear launch detected, they're like, oh, and their jaws kind of drop, and they're like, oh, my gosh. And it's like, I'm just deadened to the whole thing, because like 0.01% of these things actually land, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Players are so good at killing the ghost, or at least moving their workers, or moving their army out of the way, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so he's like, I see that nuke going up the ramp for Morrow, and I'm like, Pfft. Classic's going to shut that down. No big deal. And then, like, it's not being shut down, and it's not being shut down, and it's not being shut down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's very funny. Oh, poor yeah. Classic. Mm -hmm. Who was that Zerg that kept taking nukes a couple years ago? Sue, I think. Was it Sue that kept getting just nukes for I, absolutely no, no I think reason? It was, I think it might have been Solar. Uh... Oh, that sounds better. Solar. Yeah, yeah I think it was. Yeah, he'd have this just big, like, Broodlord, Corruptor, Infester, Hydra, Ultra Army, and then, like, mm -hmm. Terra would be like, Nuke? <laughs> just probably not going to land, but let's give it a try. And then Solar's like, La, da, da, da. <laughs> Not looking here for a quick second. Where'd my army go? Right. Yeah. Solar. And what's, poor, poor Solar. What's poor Solar. And what's so f <laughs> What's so funny, too, is that at the very least, if you don't know where the nuke dot is, just move your army. Like, mm -hmm. at the very mm -hmm. least, you might have no idea where this is, and fine. It's a big map. I get it. Mm -hmm. But at the very least, move your army. Uh, anyway, uh, poor classic. Yeah. So that was amazing. Uh, and then, I don't know, like the rest of the matches, it seemed like, oh my gosh, Team Liquid, stop. Mm, stop what? I'm getting auto-played music ads really? on Team Liquid, yeah. I am not. You should just mute the site. <laughs> I should. I should never have any reason to play sound. There you go. You're muted now. Screw you guys. Okay, that's better. And it was loud, too. Heck. I hurt your little ears. It did. That's too bad. It is. Yeah. So anyway, Hero looked great. Obviously, he ends up 2 winning beyond 2 owing Maru. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's just... It's storms. It's just absolutely wonderful just deflecting of all of the harassment that any mm -hmm. of these... Both of these Terrans are throwing at him. Right. Yeah, so I mean, Hero's just making Protoss look like it can win this GSL, which it hasn't done in a really long time now. What I'm hearing is Protoss is, can win, and it's the patch. Exactly, patch toss. Mm -hmm. it's, 
they're all just patch tosses. Um, yeah, although in fairness, I mean, they all got here on the old patch. They got to the group stage too, well, so... Also sure, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess we can wait and see how Snats does before we can really claim whether or not they're just winning because patch. Um, yeah, but the way Stats is playing and his resume, uh, if he doesn't get through group B, I'm going to be shocked. <laughs> Yeah. There is no hero in here. There is no Maro in here. There is no Byun in here. It is Shin, Cure, and Gumio. Like, if Stats mm. can't handle that group, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Would you rather he get out first than have to fight Maro or second and have to fight Hero? I mean, I prefer to see a PvT over a PvP, just in general. Would you rather risk having a PvP for the finals? Yeah, yeah, that's not fun either. <laughs> Good point. That's what happens when you don't have any Zergs. <laughs> uh, I did see someone on, I want to say it was Reddit, talking about Rogue is coming back soon. Like he's almost done he? with his military. Like his name showed up on a list somewhere. What? Um, like a community post on a Korean site. I don't oh, know. Oh, okay. I should have read more about it. I did not. <laughs> Um, Wikipedia, the new dark mode, says military service. He went in in October of 2022. Why does that not seem accurate? I feel like he went in last year, in 2023. Mm. But I'm obviously very wrong because his tough. results end promptly in August of 2022. <laughs> right. <laughs> huh. All right, cool. Rogue's coming back. That's awesome. I'm very happy yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. If he can do, you know, three quarters of what stats has pulled off after <laughs> immediately getting back, I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice. And seriously, GSL needs some Zerg help. This is embarrassing. I cannot believe that even Ragnarok is the only Zerg representative in GSL at this point. That guy. You know, what can I say? I mean, you can say it's Shin Falcon. Respect his new name. <laughs> How dare you dead name him? <laughs> yeah. I should stop doing that. Ragnarok is a such cooler name, though. Shin is Japanese for death, though. Oh, he's culturally appropriating a different culture with this one. Interesting. Well, I mean, it could be Japanese for death, or it could be English for a part of the leg. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows where he pulled the word from? <laughs> He's like learning English words for anatomy. Like, oh, Shin. I like the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I really hope that's not what happened. He, picked, he recently picked up skateboarding and bought some Shin pads. So he's like, ooh, this <laughs> word sounds cool. Shin. I like how it rolls off my tongue. Shin. <laughs> Anyway, I don't know. I don't know who to expect to get out of Group B. Stats and then, like... Yeah. For racial balance, I'd like to see Shin make it through just for fun sake, but... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I have no sense of him beating any of these guys. No. No. Wait and see. That's, I'm not even going to try to predict that. Yeah, it's like stats and then somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's not making it to the finals. <laughs> not, not, with the, uh, not with the group we've got here. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. That Good was stuff. Yeah, that was fun. That was a fun group. Oh, I was going to say, too. Um, so Maru kind of... Where was this? Yeah, so he ended up needing to beat Classic to make it out of the group. Mm-hmm. Because Hero smacked him around. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and so basically, I don't know. Uh, Tasteless and... Is it State? Who was the other guy? Yeah, State. Yeah, Tasteless and State were like, hmm. So he keeps losing longer macro games. At least in the tiny sample size we got from Group A against Protoss. Interesting. And so in Game 1, he goes for this like two-base all-in with tanks and Vikings... And Marines, Marauders, Metavacs, all sorts of great stuff, but a lot of Vikings mm -hmm. to deal with the Colossus and then to deal with any tech switching into like Tempest or Carriers that might have shown up too. Totally mm -hmm. works. And then he does it again. The second game, it's the same thing, just with more Vikings this time. He's like, 
one-shotting tempests that Hero's desperately making to get the Terran off of his front door. It's like, oh, okay, Maro's <laughs> found something here. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just wondering if that's something he keeps in his back pocket if he ends up playing a Protoss in the semifinals or the finals. Like, mm. I've got this build that seems to be reading what Protoss are doing pretty well. So, yeah, I mean... Might bust, bust it out off of two bases. Yeah, I mean, Mars has been incredibly aggressive before on the path. I've absolutely no yeah. compunction that he wouldn't just have a very aggressive build in his back pocket at all times. Um, totally. He just didn't really bust it out against uh, Hero. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what that was exactly, but... I don't know. Mind games. Yep. Just but, uh, make Hero overconfident. I think he can beat me whenever he wants. <laughs> And then when I meet him later, he'll go down. <laughs> you know, I've heard of worse ideas, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. A lot of this is mental. Uh -huh. uh, one of the worst ideas that I've heard recently was the plot for Madam Web, which I watched today. <gasps> you watched Madam Web? <laughs> it's out on streaming already. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, I believe it, I suppose. Uh... So yeah, where I, who I watched, has it? Uh, I think it was on Netflix. Oh, nice. Let me check. I mean, it's probably different from what it is in America. So oh, yeah. I don't know why I'm asking. Um, was it not on Netflix? Where did I see it then? I don't know where I saw it. Hmm. <laughs> uh, because I don't really have any other subscriptions at the moment. That would be it. I probably just watched it on YouTube then. But, um, yeah, so I watched Madden Web, which was, Jesus, what a waste of time that was. Um, <sighs> yeah, you think? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who ever talked about that movie who had seen it was like, nope, skip it. <laughs> I just wanted to see, like, give it a fair go. Were people mm. telling the truth? How bad really mm. was it? It's some big conspiracy with everyone hating on it collectively just because... Well, you know... I'm oh, not... they hate women. That's what it is. Oh, it must be, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just didn't want to, you know, join in on that mob mentality of mm -hmm. everyone hating it. I had to give it its fair go. That, you know what? I respect that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you ended up in the same spot, so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... Okay, okay, my question for you is, so the bad guy has a ton of his voice lines 80 uh, yard? 100%. Yes. <laughs> Can you tell me what your theory is about what's going on there? Um, my theory is... I have no idea. Okay, that's fair. Because, <laughs> yeah, no I've idea. heard a, a bunch of people try to come up with ideas, and like, none of them are really convincing, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I have absolutely it's... no idea why, but, you yeah. know... It's baffling. It's the weirdest... I don't know. I don't know. So there's a movie called The Snowman, mm. uh, which has... Um, I need to look this up. But it also has a character with 100% ADR. It has uh, Val Kilmer in it. And Val Kilmer had, like, throat cancer and was left after his, like, operation with a swollen tongue that just doesn't go away. So he oh, can't talk. Right. And so they cast him in this role and then 100% ADR'd his voice with someone else. Right, right, right. But to makes, like sure. get around that, all of his shots are like him speaking, but the camera's behind him, you know? So you never see his face. Right. <laughs> Which makes it a, re like a lot of scenes where... Because they want to still want to do like shot reverse shot, so it's the back of him while he speaks, and then you're seeing someone else react while they're sitting across from, and then it flips for him reacting while the other person speaks, even though the other person has a totally fine voice and doesn't need right. to be ADR. <laughs> so <laughs> they just like, flip the normal way of doing it, yeah. Right. Uh, so I don't know. Having to ADR the entire an entire character leads to interesting filmmaking not necessarily good but at least interesting uh different in some way yeah yeah um I, i'm trying to think of like did they do any of that here i don't know because 
he's got a Spider-Man suit, but he always takes it off to speak. They could have just left him in it, you know? It would have been so much easier, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that movie, everything that I've heard about it implies that it was cut to hell on the editing room floor. Mm -hmm. Whatever original vision there was for this is not present here. Right. <laughs> I love that, like... They introduce the villain, have him kill, like, Madame Web's mom while she's pregnant with her, right? And then it fast In the Amazon rainforest. In the Amazon rainforest, yeah. And then yeah. it cuts to, like, 20 years later, and it's, like, 2003, right? And the next thing that the guy's doing is, like, sleeping with this woman he meets at the opera to steal her NSA security badge so right. he can download uh, probably very real spyware on American citizens. But he, they go from, hey, we've got a digital uh, artist rendering of the people in your vision. Like they, you've described it to us. Here's what an artist says they look like. But they could be. Who know, like We don't know when that vision is. Uh, so we're going to de-age them, and they might be teens. So this, this system is just going to start looking for teens. Teens. Mm. And like, the lady, like her, his guy in the chair is like, I don't know if I want to kill teenagers. And he's like... Yeah, but I can't die. And she's like, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Your logic is unassailable, sir. I and, apologize. And then it cuts to the next scene, and he's on the phone with his guy in the chair, and she's just like, oh, hey, I know their names. They're here. It's like, oh, wow. okay. You, you okay. went from, I, you had a vision of some people, and now you know their names. No in-between. Right. So, that was fast and easy. Yes. Ugh. So bad. It is so not good. <sighs> and what just blows my mind most of all is that it's ostensibly a superhero movie, but no one's a superhero? Um, no, I mean, the, 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 the villain absolutely could have been a superhero if he just wanted to be. It's very strange. Um, because... It definitely seems like the only reason people want to kill him is that uh, he's going to kill them, right? And so if, yeah. he j if he just was like, you know what, I'm just going to not kill people, and then the heroes won't try and find me and kill me. Um, so he, he has powers. There are people living in the Amazon who definitely also still have Spider-Man powers. Uh, right. They just hang out in the forest and don't help anyone. Uh I mean, they help people walk in the forest, I guess. Uh, Madam Web has powers, and like by the end of the movie, is like learned how to use them. There's that. Mm, okay, it kind of counts, sort it, of. It's just a bit of forcing, so that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then spirit projection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I don't Mysticism. know. Mysticism. Yeah, it's... The final scene is, like, they drop a bit of the Pepsi logo on the guy. They're on top of a building filled with fireworks that are slowly exploding instead of going off very rapidly once a, you know, out-of-control fire starts spreading that they start. Um, which definitely also uh, kills people in a helicopter trying to save them. So they definitely <laughs> killed those, the helicopter pilot. Um, but she ends up in the water, mm. gets her eyesight burnt out by a firework underwater audibly gasps underwater and then it cuts to like her in the hospital and uh everything's you know everything's good the bad guy's dead the girls are alive and then it's a couple weeks later and she's in her like robotic chair looking out a window <laughs> I'm like why is she looking out a window it, she's blind now <laughs> <sighs> why is she watching over the city she literally can't see but then she's totally just using her powers to be like, bless you before people sneeze and like knowing what takeaway they bought before they g give it to her. It's very not interesting stakes at that point. <laughs> no, it's really not. Which is fine, I guess. Like it's, it's Spider-Man swinging to his pizzas to school or something, right? Um, yeah. On his way to uni. It, like, but it just doesn't feel very... Good because like the pri the people that we probably want to see do Spider Man stuff still don't have any powers. Right. 
Yeah. So, well, yeah. But we know that we'll get them sometime in the future. Like the, she's like, I can see you more clearly than I've ever seen before. And I will see you defending for what you think is right and standing up for your beliefs. And it's like, okay, well, let's examine what their beliefs were in the movie. Uh, they hate the idea of uh, plastics contaminating the ocean. So they're probably going to become eco-terrorists. Nice, nice. Um, That's good. Possibly not a bad thing, but... It's a belief system, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just... I don't know. There's so much that's just like, all right, I'm going to accept this and move on. Madame Webb first saves these girls on the train, and she's like, you three, get up. We need to leave. Go, go, go. And like two of them are just like, yes, ma'am. I will follow you off this train, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> the third one only comes because she steals her uh, skateboard. It's like, okay. But oh, after wow. that, they're all very, very much on board. It's, it's, it's classic, classic maneuver, stealing someone's skateboard to get them on your side. I like it. Uh-huh. Well, just to get mm -hmm. you follow them. Like, sure. it feels very rushed in places, which is weird, because it also feels like it's 30 minutes too long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. It's tough. It's tough when a movie feels simultaneously rushed and too long. Yeah. Uh, that has been my bad movie watching of the week. I think I might stick to better things for the rest of the week. That's a good idea. Definitely yeah. space out your bad movie watching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Gross. All right. Well, uh, I'm glad that we got somebody on the ground to investigate <laughs> what's going on with Madame Webb. <laughs> oh, yes. Always. Um... <sighs> hmm. Yeah. You watched anything other than Dude in the last, like, two weeks? Uh, <laughs> did I tell you about Kipo and the Age of the Wonder Beasts? I don't think you did. So it's a Netflix kids show. It showed up in like 2020. Okay. And my daughter was watching it. And, mm. you know, sometimes I just, we just like watch stuff together. Some of it's good. Some of it's bad. Mm -hmm. uh, this is pretty good. It's uh, kind of a post-apocalyptic kids show cartoon. Okay. So what happened is at some point in our world there was an event that turned many of the animals in our world into giant versions of animals with human intelligence. Okay. So, so all the humans were driven underground because we can't compete with human intelligent <laughs> giant monsters that are better at killing stuff than we are. Apparently. Right. Is it like if it turned, turned, would it still turn a bear into a giant bear? Like that'd be a really big bear. Yes. They have what are called mega beasts. Okay. Where some, yep, some things are just like, not skyscraper, like four-story tall building or uh, right. four-story tall animals. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. uh, yep. So Kipo, I think she was basically born in one of these underground burrows. They call them. Humanity's kind of eked out a living down there. They're doing sieges. okay. Uh, yeah, they're sieges. <laughs> uh, and it's very much a power of friendship show. Kipo okay. is a power of friendship magical girl in every way. Mm -hmm. Uh, she ends up getting abandoned on the surface and has to like make friends and discovers that the creatures that are up there aren't all super mean and some of them are nice. And okay. so she comes up with the idea that humanity and the, you know, the wonder beasts can mm -hmm. live together on the surface and be friends. And everyone's like, Kipo, you're insane. But she's like, I am a magical girl with the power of friendship. <laughs> and uh, it all works out in the end. So there you go. Spoiler alert, it's a kid's show. <laughs> <laughs> I recently uh, just watched rewatched Avatar, which is very much a kid's show. The uh, whole thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, all three Dang, seasons. Okay, um, nice. Yeah, yeah, it's still a bunch of time, though. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to say about that. Yeah, um, YouTube was like, hey, we, we know you just watched Avatar on Netflix, so here's a bunch of avatar shorts and i'm like okay <laughs> that's i'm not i definitely don't feel tracked now thanks um no. but i keep getting shorts that are like and here's something that happened in the comics after the tv show for ang and the gang right and mm -hmm. it's like remember azula i'm like yes i do remember azula yeah they just like let her out <laughs> of prison <laughs> and, and like, she's not trying to genocide everybody no she's like well i mean she does sort of yeah she like 
uses lightning bending to like give soccer a zap as they take her to some village where her mom is with oh Zusha. dang yeah, right and she's like, like we're taking you to see your family and she's like let me murder you real quick no 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 not a, not, not a full bend like uh she uses it to, oh. like static stuff like a static electricity zap oh it's like, like a playful little yeah. zap but I mean, it's okay. it, like, I just can't imagine that after the ending of Avatar, anyone is letting her out of prison, you know? Not until she has all of the therapy. No. <laughs> right. It's <laughs> like uh... months and years of therapy. And then maybe we could think about letting her out. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, e even putting her in like, it's, she's a person who it's like, okay, Aang, please spirit, uh, like energy bend her and take her bending away. You know, for just, Ooh. like, why would you not, <laughs> you know? Well, try the therapy thing. If it's not working, then maybe take her bending away. Sure. Because she's just a psycho with the ability to murder everybody within a, you know, 30 meter radius at all times. Then uh, maybe take that away, sure. Yeah. Because, I mean, she's just mommy issues, right? Uh, yeah, I'm... I guess she also probably still probably resentful about um, Ty Lee and May abandoning her as well, and yeah, probably true. has done uh, more than one murders in her life at this point. That's gonna stick with her. <laughs> yeah, that'll have some after effects. I mean, Ty Lee and May are down with being friends with her if she's not trying to murder the people they care about, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I guess, maybe, but, like, at the end of the Avatar, one's joined the Kyoshi Warriors, and the other one's banging the Fire Lord. Right. Neither of them are like, we need to take time out of our lives to care for our good friend Azula, who's clearly yeah, going through true. a rough patch, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And then were they like, hey, watch the new live-action Avatar? No, no. They were just they like... They didn't recommend it? No, because it's like a 60 second YouTube video about something that happened in the comics. Which apparently yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a whole bunch of comics where it's like alternate reality and Katara's an evil waterbender princess. <laughs> and she's like <laughs> bloodbending people for fun. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, they definitely explored that possibility in the show. Mm -hmm. that, that old lady is apparently her teacher in the alternate reality comic. Mm -hmm. And she kind of was in the reality, our reality too. Well, yeah. she she's more like um, Iro Bazooka, <clears throat> though, in the comic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <sighs> so, yep. I've been trying to start a rumor uh, on Twitter that John Cena is going to play Toph in the live action. Wait, what? <laughs> So you know when they it, when they all go to the uh, they're in the Fire Nation they go to see us like a, a play and Toph's yeah. character is like this buff dude yeah 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 I'm trying to start a rumor that that's going to be played by John Cena ah uh, nice I'm down <laughs> I am so, I I would be so down to watch it for that I'd just watch just that episode I think <laughs> yeah from everything the show creators have talked about originally Toph was supposed to be a big huge rock like rock sized Earthbender. <laughs> Right. And I don't know at what point they're like, but what if we did this instead? But it seems like it's pretty late because there's a bunch of like concept art where it's, you know, it's Aang Katara, Sokka, and then bruh, big <laughs> six foot tall guy. Right. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know when they changed that. Yeah. <sighs> Man, that show is so good. It is so good. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. I've been hearing some, you know, people talking about the live action. Avatar and like a lot of people are saying it's not as bad as the M Night Shyamalan Avatar, but I say that's a low bar. Right. That's so what? You're price. not <laughs> you're not in the basement. Congratulations. <laughs> you want a prize for that? Uh, you I have had... to try to be worse than that. Right. I've uh, one person at work like thoroughly recommended it to me. Uh oh. Like, it was like you just you gotta watch it. It's so good. And then question question. Has yeah. that person watched the original yes. animated Avatar? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And right. then my housemates who have also watched the original are like, it's fine. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Like there's a bunch of changes and that they really don't like and 
a lot of stuff that's just being like sandwiched in for like it needs to be there because it was there in the original. Which... Yeah, and sometimes it's like you're adapting; you don't have to put everything in there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, someone pointed some out people... that in the, yeah, go ahead. All of the live action, the first season, Ang never gets a water bending master. Right. <laughs> It seems, it seems important. He can waterbend. It's fine. Yeah, sure, he can waterbend. Yeah. I, I've Most people, I think, even the people that are generally positive about the show are mostly upset about what they did with Katara. Like, she has no personality. Like, they just oh, kind of really? turned her into this, like, brick wall of... She just doesn't ever... I don't know. Like, what they've said, she just kind of goes through life getting what she wants and doesn't really seem to ever get upset about anything or mad or really that sad about stuff. Okay. She's just kind of there and they're like, what happened? How did we? And it's like, hey, Katara's like, hey, I stole the waterbending scroll off the pirates and everyone's like, yeah, that's fine. And then they just move on. <laughs> no, she, it's given to her. Her grandmother gives it to her. Oh, okay. They take that whole thing away. <laughs> Grand Grand just has a waterbending scroll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Fire Nation came and very specifically targeted all the waterbending uh, to, like, destroy the culture of the Southern Water Tribe. But Grand Grand's like, yeah, but I smuggled this one scroll. I've kept exactly. it alive. Exactly. Okay. And I kept it alive until my granddaughter was, like, 13. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, would you give a waterbending scroll to, like, a nine-year-old? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Anywho, yeah, they're, yeah, good things. People really like the kid who was cast to be Aang. They think he does a really good job. No, no, it's um, Aang. It is not. Don't you do that. <laughs> <laughs> With Aang. Although they do get annoyed at how many times he says that he's the Avatar, but the responsibility is too big for him. And it's like, okay, you can say it like twice, but after the 13th time in the season, like we need you to have different lines, kid. And again, not his fault. It's the writer's fault. Right. It's not the kid's fault. No. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Because Aang, like, having just rewatched it, Aang does have a, a lot of struggles with being the Avatar. Certainly. He, he very deliberately doesn't tell Sokka and Kantara the first ep couple episodes that he's right. the Avatar. He's just an airbender who was frozen in ice somehow and has glowing eyes And when he's stuck in there. Um, but it's not, I don't blame them for not knowing. They've only ever lived in a world with no avatar. Yeah. Um, anyway. Anyway, yeah. just, you know, ups and downs, hits and misses. So whatever. Yeah. yeah. Swings and roundabouts. Mm. Yeah. All right. Should we talk about Valdor? Yes. Valdor. Birth of the Imperium. Mm -hmm. By Chris Wright. It's time for Warhammer, people. It is. It is Warhammer time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so we talked about this a little bit on the Friday stream, but uh, a bit of a shorter book compared to what we've been dealing with. Yeah, it's longer than a short story, mm -hmm. but it's not a doesn't quite feel like a proper long novel. Yeah, you know? I don't know. Right. Yeah, I don't know how to because I'm like I'm looking at the the birth of the Imperium lexicon and it says it's 272 pages. Which apparently is only about like a six hour audio book, but I swear there have been longer books with less pages. So tiny font maybe. Yeah, maybe they just printed it smaller for this one. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what's interesting about this is this book's only like four years old, right? Uh -huh. it's, it's one of the more it's one of the latter releases of the the Horus Heresy book. And despite not actually being part of the Horus Heresy, it's very, like, it's not super important to the Horus Heresy, but you get a lot of insight about things that are pertinent in the Horus Heresy. Yeah. And so, when it came out, it wasn't a Horus Heresy numbered novel. Like, um, oh. so it, it's under the umbrella, but it's, like, it's not book 47 in the list or whatever. It's just there. <laughs> They're like, you, write a book about this in this time period. Go. Yeah. Kind of. Huh. Yeah. Um, That's interesting. Mm. If you like um, this book and the the, the the custodies and Chris Wright, there are another series that he's written 
called uh, Watchers of the Throne, The Emperor's Legion, which is... Uh, it's set in 40k, but it's all it's more Gar it's more uh, Chris Wright writing custodies and doing very interesting stuff with terror at 40k. Hmm. Highly recommend if you just want to pick something up to read. Um, it's a good book. I really like it. Uh, so what's it called again? Uh, Watches of the Throne, The Emperor's Legion. Uh, okay. Absolutely, it's not a Horace Heresy book. Because mm -hmm. it's, you know, 40k. It actually has kind of to do with, like, Gulliman coming back. So if you're still interested in reading about that, you can do that. Um, so I, 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 when did that book come out? 2017. Okay, so I actually wrote that book first. And then that's probably why they gave him this book to do. Because he's already written a bunch of custody stuff, I guess. Yeah, makes sense. That makes sense, yeah. There's French language versions of this. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. L'ombre l'ombre du régent. <laughs> la légion de l'empereur. Why do I have French language books at my library? What is going on? I, I could not tell you. Don't know. Anyway. Not available. What, whatever. We'll go back to that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, once again, I made this point, <clears throat> again, in our stream. Mm -hmm. But it's just another example of something that happened in the past. Mm -hmm. And they're doing things, the people in the novel are doing things that we know will not succeed, I guess, to put it simply, right? Yes. There are some people in this book very much moving against what the Emperor is trying to do and what mm -hmm. he's trying to establish and project. Mm-hmm. And so we meet these people, and once we figure out what's going on, we're like, well, <laughs> that's too bad. <laughs> yeah, like, their plans almost immediately fail. Yeah. Um, but, like, still a very interesting look at, like, the event. Like, the, the things that happen still manage to be engaging, right? Even though we know that, like, they can't succeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Surf has really good points that, like, even before they got off terror, the Emperor's Imperium was filled with backstabbing and cheats and stuff and people trying to like destroy his dream from within, right? Like Yeah, people are people. Yeah. People are people. And that the Emperor as much as he was like science and reason and justice kind of uh people didn't always agree with what that means and it's no wonder his vision failed. It's kind of a sad look for his ideas <laughs> reading this book. Yeah, I mean, it's we believe in science and reason and logic and democracy and stuff. But mm -hmm. when push comes to shove, my vision will prevail. What right. I am doing here matters more than any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, once you've reached that point, you've kind of lost the thread about the other stuff you talk about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. The Emperor is very much a, a because I know I'm right kind of guy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah, he like we get a little reference here to the deal he may have made with Chaos, which I don't think it's something you really know about. Is it the nope. Emperor? Like the, I've, the I've, I've told you that the Emperor is like this Prometheus kind of figure. Like he stole fire from mm -hmm. the gods, and like so Loki, he kind of made a deal. Maybe like he found a warp gate at some uh, at one point and came out super juiced up as a psycho, um, and it's implied that he made a deal. But here we're seeing that like maybe he's losing his humanity, right? Like, you cut uh, out there. Maybe he's what? Losing his humanity. Um, mm. Mm. Like Malkador's talking to Constantine about the Primarchs being missing. He's like, can you believe he's calling them his sons? He's like, yeah, he's worried that like he's losing the last vestments of humanity that he's got on him and like his emotions. Um, yeah. But in that case, like why is he expressing like familial ties to that is interesting because that's the other thing by the uh, point of view of the Gulliman in 40k he's very much like the emperor sees us as tools he so very rarely called us his sons that we can't ever believe that it it's how he really feels about us right here, here right. we also have like him either calling them his sons now to set up some sort of like 
backdoor way into making sure that they have imperial power in like court, right? Because like if they were just here and he got to raise them as generals, he'd be like, "Here's my new generals," as we start this thing. But when you're like a hundred and fifty years into a crusade, you need an excuse to let this guy into your army, and he's just being like, "Well, he's my son. That's why. That's why he has authority now, because he's just my son, and you don't question that, you know?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, he's, the emperor is mm. not calling them his sons out of love, but because he wants them to be nepotism highest. <laughs> it's an easy way to communicate authority. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I guess just from a, you know, 20,000 foot view, effectively, this is set in a time on Terra on Earth mm -hmm. where... The Emperor's one? Yeah. Right. Terra is all but conquered. Yeah. There so, are still some holdouts they mention, but like nobody with really any kind of a power to threaten what's going on here. Right. Although Makandawaya does kind of suggest that there are people on the other side of like Mount Ararat, that there's an army there that could still repel us. So there's like maybe one or two places that are still holding out. But yeah. it's it's so more or less conquered that the Emperor is rumored to not be on Terra, like Malkador was off trying to meet with the people on Luna, and I guess it's implied that the Emperor might be at Mars making that deal. Right. Um, the Mechanicum. Yeah, I I wasn't sure if he was like piecing out to Mars, or if he was it was supposed to be a reference that he was like off visiting uh, Uriah at the last church. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Just having a nice conversation with a priest for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Not wrong. So anyway, it's just kind of... Yeah, so he is building his... Palace. Seat of government. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, can I just say, I love how, like, when it first introduces a new character, it always gives you their take on, like, the placement of the palace where um, yeah. Valdor is like, it's a ludicrous place to build a city. We have to have atmospheric scrubbers on 24-7, <laughs> and we're building a palace so big it's getting microclimates in the, the halls, which are so big that there's, like, what machines would be in here? And it's like, spoilers, it's for Titans. Titans want to walk in the palace, and that's why. Uh, but they don't have any Titans yet. And then it goes to Macandawire, and she's like, yeah, no, the top of... Mount Everest is like the perfect place for a palace. All of the world will look up and see this untouched place in the seat of the power of the Imperium. It's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really charming. It's something I forgot about the books. Yeah. It's just, it's at the top of the Himalayan mountains. Yeah. Like, and that's why that, the atmosphere is terrible. The land is terrible. You're not intended to like grow stuff here. <laughs> like it's a nightmare. It is an absolute nightmare. And yeah. A, Visually, it's imposing, but also you have people on Earth have to basically think, what kind of power does it take to do this? Right. right. Mm -hmm. who, he who can do this, what else can he do? You right. know. What can he not do? <laughs> what, what couldn't he do? There you go. Yeah. 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 So for that reason, if you're trying to project power and make your enemies fear you, it's not a bad way to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's... Yeah. So for the rest of the book, there's actually two plots going on. One is McCandewire, who is the Provost Marshal, like the, the High Lord of the Lex, which is basically, she is the number one cop on the planet. Yeah, she seems like maybe like one of the highest ranked non-meta humans. Mm -hmm. She is like, that is the highest rank of humans leading the civilian authority in yeah. this area that's high lords and by the time of like 40k and there are no more primarchs high, lord, high lords are it like there are they are the people running the imperium um yeah so if she had held on to her position she would have been like one of the most important people in 200 years um but you know she goes and farms beans in africa um yeah goes back home yeah um spoilers so she mm -hmm. she basically is like, hey, look, the the custodies have just killed an entire division of like the emperor's armed forces, and 
that's not okay, right? Like, I have a very strong sense of justice, and that wasn't sanctioned by the Emperor. There's absolutely nothing, like, no reason or justification. They're just... The Thunder Warriors are just gone, but the Custodes did it. We went to this battle site on Mount Ararat, and there's Custodes shards from their armor or something, right? Like, I've got proof. Right. She, she wants to chat with Valdor. He gives her an audience. And basically confesses, or at least talks about how there are no new generals coming. Um, yeah, and what's fun about Valdor is he doesn't have emotions. Right. So I, I don't think he has enough emotional range to reach the point you need to confess something. He's just saying what happened, <laughs> and no, no part of him is like I'm confessing to something terrible here. Right. right. He is just factually recounting like the things that yeah. happened. He's like, yeah. it wasn't a crime. It was barely something I thought of doing, you know? It's right. just a thing that happened. Yeah, I found this dude on Reddit who kind of went through some of the some of the things that interested him as a big Warhammer fan. Because I'm like, I need, I think I need a little bit more context here as I'm reading. <laughs> sure. Uh, but she mentions, oh, what's the word she uses? The reason she's able to go to uh, Valdor and be like, Tell me what you know mm -hmm. is because of this law, Lex Pacifica. Yeah. That it, so this person writes, the Lex Pacifica grants the Adeptus Terra inquiry power over the Legio Custodes. Yes. And then his comment is, what is the Lex Pacifica? We'll surely find out more about this later. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> the Lex Pacifica... Um, Lex just means law, right? Okay, so sure. It's, it's specific law, and uh, I think in 40k, it is just the law of people, and as a high lord, she can, has the right to investigate people. That's what it means. Um, right, because she's a cop. Yeah, that's basically yeah. it. Um, it is still a thing in 40k, right? And it's like, what is it specifically? No idea. What is it specific powers? <laughs> no idea. Does anybody uh, ever quote it at all no yeah, sure oh people a little will bit talk, of that people will talk about using it in their authority and stuff um, that's different though talk about using it in their authority is different from telling us what's in it specifically <laughs> true, right true, true. okay <laughs> <laughs> um oh okay hold on lex pacificatoria is like so it might be an abbreviation of that Pacificatoria mm. is Latin neo neologism, which is translates for Pacific Law or Law of the Peacemakers. So it is mm. just cop law. It is what we would call our police law, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah. So basically she uses whatever channel she needs to to be like, I need to talk to Valdor right. of the Custodes mm -hmm. and in, like interrogate him. And she's like, there's a good chance I'll die. There's a right. really solid chance that uh, he'll just order my death if I push these, push these buttons and go down these paths. Um, yeah. But the reason she wants to do it is because she's been fomenting a rebellion against the Emperor. Well, uh, sort of. What do she... you mean, sort of? She knows the emperor's not there, and it's no, at no point is she like, "I'm now anti-emperor." She's just like one of the people of, like one of the uh, captain generals of the Imperium has just launched a coup against like another part of the Imperial army, right? And she sees that as a, a crime under the Lex, right? But it, at no point is she like seizing power for herself. Like at no point is it ever stated that she would just be like. The emperor comes back, and I'm going to try and repel him too. You know? No, 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 no. But she does reach the point where she's like, even if the emperor didn't order this illegal act, he allowed it to happen. Sort of, because she's she's very much like she has a lot of po points where she says, um, "I, I like, I don't want to do this. I would do any like any piece of information that would give me justification to stop it. An imperial sanctioned by the emperor, anything." She just wants some piece of scrap of information to not attack her own people, basically. Yeah. Um, because part of the conversation she has with Valdor is Ushatan, who is described as, let me check my, my scroll, the ghost of all murders. <laughs> 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 
which is chilling. Um, you Certainly. know. Um, and so she knows that, like, when you unleash an army like the Thunder Warriors on a city, it's not going to be, like, they, they can talk about, like, oh, no slaughter here. But, like, I think she knows in her heart that that's probably not going to happen. And, like, I think if she, the, the Emperor, if they just told her, hey, the Emperor said to do this, she'd be like, okay. <laughs> right? I, I like, guess. And it raises the perfectly good question is, why didn't the Emperor just, like, give them the heads up that they didn't want the Thunder Warriors anymore? Like, he was like, we're done with this. We've got better stuff now. Right. Because yeah. that's, that, that's the, the interesting thing, is, like, you could just phase out induction of new Thunder Warriors and then, like, let them phase out, or, like, slowly Because out. they do. Because the whole problem with the Thunder Warriors is that eventually they go and or like explode yeah yeah i mean that that's certainly yeah. possible but like <laughs> put them put like put them on a couple of ships throw them at luna right like malkido sitting there being like we're going to need yeah. three detachments of these new warriors to take luna um which okay fair but like throw the thunder warriors at them like if they all die you go oh no it's been a huge accident here's a memorial not we need to like sanction the the, the custodians to butcher them all you know? Yeah. No, that's a good point. Should have done, but I mean, maybe the Emperor just didn't worry about it. He's like, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a risk here, but eh. <laughs> can I mean, handle I... anything. My custo custodes can handle anything that they throw at us. I think that might liter literally just be it. The Emperor's like, the custodies can deal with it. They're a ticking time bomb. I don't want to have to organize like fleets of Thunder Warriors. The, like, fleets for the thunder warriors he just doesn't want to have to deal with that and he yeah. doesn't want to give the civil administration any like <sighs> oversight on military matters at this point right so he's like i have to do this and i have to do it in a way that doesn't bring in the high lords right like it's imperial decree it just needs to be done right right <sighs> rough so okay so then my question is the side of the battle that candlewire looks Visits. at in the first chapter of the book mm -hmm. is that an extermination event of that is where so the, the new that is where the custodies killed most of the uh thunder warriors that okay the battle of mount ararat yeah yeah so there's no real details on how that went down no it, it there's, there isn't a war book on like Here's that fight. That but happen. I mean, but I don't want the details. I just want, like, the custodians were like, all right, Thunder Warrior, come here. I've got a job for you. And then they just murder. Yeah. Is that pretty much it? That could be it. It could be, like, they were, they were told to muster there for whatever reason. Didn't know custodians would be there. And McCandlewire even makes, like, a, a point which is like, I see why it was done here. They would have been hemmed in on all sides and all this yeah. stuff. Um but it's like it's unclear of whether or not they knew they were going to be custodies there and like they betrayed them like that or if they were just like surprise sneak attack while you sleep you know yeah bad times bad times bad times are happy all okay so there's leftover thunder warriors there's a thunder warrior primarch hanging around who's pissed at what happened <laughs> right mccandaway uses like her imperial authority to shelter a bunch of them she's like able to find remnants that like didn't make the muster or for whatever reason survived the battle um yeah and like somehow keep them in hiding for a couple months it seems like yeah while she investigates the custodies <laughs> she sends her like butler to do it like to go and like buy information on people like counting custodies and he's got like a fake augmentic and he's getting through uh security checkpoints and stuff and i really liked the the descriptions of like the High Lords are so new that they're, but they're already fighting over petty powers and privileges. It's like, ah, oh, yes, if you want the right kind of silk, you have to be so special now. Uh, right. And then he goes to, like, this guy who's buying information off, and he's like, I'm from the, um, the Departmento Mysterioso. Look it up. It's very well funded. Very legit. <laughs> <laughs> I loved that. I don't, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, but he basically finds out that like their custodies disappearing into the palace, right? Like they're slowly pulling back from their regular patrol routes. No idea why, but there's also been shipments of weapons to inside the palace, which basically gives McCandlewire the impression that the custodies are fortifying themselves for when the Emperor gets back and they're going to fight, fight him off. Like, and that it's Valdor's coup. Because she doesn't really get what a custodies is. She just thinks it's another no. big fighter guy, right? Right, right. She has absolutely no idea that they're, like, incapable of betraying the Emperor, more or less, you know? Yeah, no, not wrong. Yeah. That's Valdor and T. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so she's gathered up some ragtags. We mm -hmm. get to know specifically Achilles... Achilla, yeah. Um, Achilla, who was a mercenary who's just mm -hmm. been, you know, running from war to war, battle to battle on Terra his entire life. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really care about anything, doesn't believe in anything. He's just, he'll fight for money. Right. But then those jobs start drying up because everything is being consolidated under the Emperor and the Imperium. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, I always thought I would die in battle. That didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like there's one last one. So he joins yeah. up with Candlewire and he's like, yeah, let's do this. Let's yeah. try to take down the Emperor. That guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, I've got some like bionic eyes or like uh, his sniper scope or whatever. Sees a custodies kick a tank over from three kilometers away, and he's like, "That's just unfair. Where's the <laughs> like, fun? Where's the sense of competition?" <laughs> it's like, so this is new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a pretty fun character. Hmm. So, all right, so this is happening. There's this Candlewire group. And again, mm -hmm. Candlewire, the people in her organization, people in her little group of people unhappy with her emperor are like, let's just go. Let's just take it mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, we need proof. We need, we need to know that this happened. We need a confession. We need evidence. Right. right. So that's why she's interrogating Valdor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's happening. And at the same time, a character that was apparently introduced in this book and had not existed before... Amar Astarte. Amar Astarte, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. super genius scientist lady who gets scooped up by the Emperor during the consolidation of Terra. Yes. Uh, She's been doing her own uh, gene science just mm -hmm. in her own labs and stuff. And he's like, you're really smart. You're really good let at me, this stuff. Yeah. Let me dump you in a laboratory and give you infinite money. Go. <laughs> pretty, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so some people really dislike this character because there's a trend that Games Workshop has of making all of the names for things based off people and like mm. retroactively being like, no, there was a person. Uh, so some of the ones that make sense that people like is that there are tanks called the Lehman Ross Battle Tank and right. the Malkador Tank, which were named after just people in the Imperium, right? It's like, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. makes sense. They also had a thing called a Land Raider and a Land Speeder, right? Things that raid and speed over land. One's faster, one's just like a troop transport, right? Mm. They then introduced a character called Arcan Land, who discovered the ability to make those. So they aren't Land Speeders, they're Land Speeders. <laughs> yeah, that's dumb. Don't do that. <laughs> and, it, I mean, it's interesting. They hate that idea, but Arcan Land is a great character and everyone loves him. <laughs> <laughs> he is the tech priest version of Indiana Jones. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so he's great. Okay. Um, mm. And then you have Astarte, who l lent her name to the Astartes. Yeah. So this Redditor guy says, the book's released in 19, or 2019. Prior to this, the Emperor and Malkador were the brains behind the Astartes project. Mm -hmm. um, so they're like, you've had a bunch of years of this is the case, and ta-da, there's a new person who's actually the brains behind the Astartes project. Well, sort of. Um, that person is admitting the fact that the Emperor had labs and labs of people working on it. Like, this is just the newest named person. Yeah. Like, it, 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 and even Astartes, like, it's very much like the Emperor showed us mostly what to do and then we just did it, right? Right. Um, so, those things are still true. Um, but there's, like, art of, like, regular people working on gene seed in the lab that's like dated terra pre-unification right mm -hmm. so the idea that there have been other people is not new right 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 certainly not new to this book 
Okay. Um, this is just the first new named person. Uh, right. Yeah, and but so it, she basically reaches the point like, yeah. that she believes that the Astartes are doomed. Right. That because the Primarchs have been lost, which we get some more of that mm-hmm. in there, mm-hmm. that the Astartes are not going to have their dads. Mm-hmm. And so they're not going to be able to fulfill the purpose that she originally intended for them. Pretty much, yeah. And therefore, they should just all be destroyed. Yep. Okay. <laughs> She's like, we're making Thunder Warriors, but way worse, right? Like, yeah. imagine Thunder Warriors that don't self-destruct after a certain amount of time, but are yeah. also just horrifically violent monsters. <laughs> yeah, they're better at killing stuff, and they never die. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, us. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so she's doing this independent of Kandawar? Yes, she is. She's just doing That's it. That's incredible. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just because it's funny, because both Astartes and Kandawire, like launched their big things they've been planning for a while at the That's... same time. Right, yeah. That's all, yeah. No, yeah, it's... Because my brain was like, did I miss something? Is this connected? Are they doing this in concert? Because it, it, nope. it, it's meant to feel connected, because... Um, yeah. Valdor is giving like some orders to one of his fellow custodians, whose name I can't remember... I want to say Sam. Uh, I don't remember. It's the one that ends up fighting Astarte. Um, going after the old lady. I don't remember his name. But he, he's like, after, like, or I think it's like just before his first interview with Candlewire, it's like, she knows, I think we should terminate. And he's like, I trust your judgment. Do what you have to. Like, but don't, if you don't have to, right? But I trust your judgment. And we're meant to think that that is Valdor talking to another custodies about Macandawire having evidence of the Battle of Mount Ararat and the slaughtering of the Thunder Warriors, but it's Valdor talking to this other custodies about Astarte and like yeah. her her actual insurrection. Mm. Yep. It's good stuff. Yeah. Anyway, so it all comes to a head. This last bit of Candlewire rebels mm-hmm. start marching on the gate at the Himalayan fortress. Right. And then, surprise, a bunch of Astartes start appearing out of nowhere. Candlewire did not know existed, nor did anyone else that she's been working for for all this time have any idea that they're there. Right. Um, yeah, Which I was like, mm, I don't know. You don't know? You don't know about secret armies coming out of nowhere? Yeah, it was tough. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's hard to hide an entire army. Well, uh, but they like hinted it though throughout the entire book. Like, Valdo has like this thing where he's like, "You weren't listening. I said there were no new generals, but there are. There is a new army, and like." We know that they've been smuggling a shit ton of weapons into... Not even smuggling, just importing weapons into the palace. And it's like, yeah, they were raising an army. Yeah. Like, they, they give us two hints to it, like, beforehand. And so I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, and it's... It's true. And it's not like they had all 20 legions ready. They were just like, here's one. And it's here's the Dark Angels. <laughs> yeah, here's the Dark Angels... They're not great at killing stuff yet. They're still on have their training wheels on, but they're more than enough to wipe out your ragtag arm. Yes. Um, With the exception of the Thunder Warrior Primarch that mm, Valdor has to handle personally. Yeah. Yeah. Who they seem to be engaged in battle, not with each other for a very long time while they have conversation. <laughs> Which is always funny to me. It's like, are you just like screaming at the top of your lung? <laughs> Yes, yes, they are. <laughs> I just, I imagine the soldiers around them being like, you guys have time to have a conversation while you're doing this? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so Kandawire and friends get slapped down. Kandawire specifically is spared. There mm-hmm. are orders given to the Astartes not to kill her. Valdor's mm-hmm. like, so we knew about this for a while. Good try, though. Yeah. Go live your life. And she's like, what is happening? <laughs> like, yeah, you were you were a high lord and you acted in your best interests. Your only crime was not knowing the inner workings of the Emperor's 
in a most circle. No crime there, really. Just we'll <laughs> let you go. <laughs> no harm, no foul. <laughs> yeah. Uh. yeah, so that goes poorly. Uh, Astartes has been secretly creating uh, Astartes that are yes. perfect, that are loyal to her and those not to the Emperor. Those aren't Astartes. No. They're, no, the, what does she just, call them? They're, uh, her, uh, not Praetorians. Um, but they're just, they're just people. They're just regular humans. Okay. They're just gene altered to be loyal to the prophet, <laughs> which they call her. Right. Uh, um, yeah, so then she launches her plan to basically use these perfectly loyal soldiers to get down into the depths of the science labs. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the at the compound, I need a word for this. Fortress compound, it government is, seat. It, it, it is the Imperial Dungeon. That okay, is, so specifically is, for the dungeon. Yes, but I mean, that yeah. is where the lab is. Yeah, it's the Imperial Dungeon. Yeah. Which... So they basically head down. They're going after a specific target, and the custodians catch wind of this. They're like, what is happening? Mm. Where are they going? They're going, yeah. I'd like they, they're... Part of them are just like heading to protect the... the Astati herself. Yeah. The rest are like planting explosives. Yeah, the and they're trying of... to disable the elevators that take you to the lower levels of the dungeon. Yeah, they're trying to slow the, the custodies because they can only spare like one squad to do it. Um, that's kind of like all those people are doing. <sighs> Laying explosives and jamming elevators, buying time for mm -hmm. Astati to be like, I'm going to blow up all of the gene seed. The Primarchs Personally. are lost. Yeah. yeah. Primarchs are lost. We're making Thunder Warriors again. That's not good. We should just blow them all up now. And... There's an awesome scene where the guys uh, are heading down in the elevator and they're trying to, like, jam it. <laughs> and one of the custodi... Is it... One of the custodies... Uh, it's Sam. I don't remember his name. That's right. Sam guy. Yeah. It's the, yeah, like, so they're heading down in their elevator, and all of a sudden they, like, stop. And they're like, wait, what? What's going on? What is, ha what is happening? <laughs> and, yeah, it's just Sam. He's just grabbed the cable of the elevator and is back up. Right. Fantastic. Good stuff. It's good, yeah. Don't mess with custodies, man. No. We really need to know what that guy's name is, because it's not Sam. <laughs> no. I think I've got it here. Hold on a second. Uh... Simonis. Simonis. There we go. I was close. Yeah. Mm hmm. Simonis. Yeah. Paul's poor Simonis, who's like desperately trying to save the gene hmm. seed, begging Astartes not to do it. It's like, the em like even if it's flawed, the emperor, it's the emperor's will. You, like, it's not your place to destroy this shit now. Right. And <sighs> it's we a custodian's argument. Like, everything comes down to that at its right. core. It's the right. emperor's will. Knock it off. <laughs> kind of, yeah. I have no other counter here. <laughs> That's enough for me. Why is it not enough for you too, lady? Yeah, what's wrong with your brain? <laughs> um, I think that, I think there's a lot of really interesting perspective with the study and uh, Valdor, where when the warp spirited the Primarchs away, and Valdor was like, huh. Should we save what's in the lab? What's left? All this gene seed? And she's like, yes. <laughs> and, and even though, like, Valdor would have been like, again, no personality. So he's not, he's not up or down on it either way at that point. But it's like, he makes the effort to, like, save as much of the genetic material as possible, which they then make Astartes, which he doesn't like. And then she's then flipped as well, where she's like, We've just made Thunder Warriors again. This is terrible. Yeah. Uh, so they, they, do a, they do a bit of a flip on perspectives, which is interesting. It is interesting. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah, um, so she ends up successfully blowing up all of the vials that will create Astartes. Mm -hmm. um, and Simonis is like, no! I failed. The Emperor's will. Yeah. I was too late. I'm, I was tricked by the mm -hmm. the old the, the trigger the bad guy is holding is not the real trigger. <laughs> that was great. That was funny. You fool. Always go uh, for the shooter, not the gun. 
Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he almost dies in the explosion, but he's a custody, so he's fine. Yeah, I mean, he spent some time in hospital. But, sure. Yeah, he's fine. Um, and then Valdor's like, so, everything's okay? <laughs> We've been secretly siphoning off tiny little bits of gene seed and storing them in other places so we don't have all our eggs in one basket again because we've seen yeah. that that can go wrong um yeah but it is interesting that like the emperor's plan for the great crusade nearly died several times in gestation in embryo yeah. yeah um not wrong and i don't know Think of the the Space Marines in by forty k, and like all the shit that they do in the Horus Heresy of like, hey, we're gonna help you fight these these slavers and torturers. What's that? You don't want to join the Imperium after we've been best bros? Take my hand, please. And then they just kill them anyway because they weren't joining. Was Astartes right <laughs> that like yeah. Space Marines left their own devices without their Primarchs? Uh, or a shit show, and like with their Primarchs, they're certainly not a whole lot better. <laughs> I was gonna say, with their Primarchs, nothing's <laughs> usually all that different. <laughs> right. Outside well, of maybe a couple, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Outside of a handful, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is fun. You get the perspective of somebody who kind of saw what was coming and was like, this is going to be terrible, and tries to stop it. Yes. Yeah, amazing. Uh, uh, I thought this comment was interesting. So at the end of the book, Valdor tasks Simonis to form the Blood Games after mm -hmm. his failure to stop Astarte's plans. Mm -hmm. Yep. So yeah, so that's the impetus for the Blood Games that we got in the previous book we read. Yeah. Yeah. Or the short that we read. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, they, they basically they realize that like genuine threats are very hard to simulate, and so they need to take turns acting as genuine threats and like. Finding ways into the palace. It's good. It makes sense. It's, uh... Yeah, finding ways into the palace and then shoring up those ways, yeah. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, so it's good. I mean, one of the major messages of the book is that, like, Valdor's kind of a tragic character. <laughs> <laughs> he just yeah. doesn't have... Like, you said that. He doesn't have a personality. He doesn't necessarily have wants or dreams or hopes or likes or wants or fears or... He's just a blank slate that exists solely to extend the Emperor's will in all things. And it's like, so, is that living? So that's not just Valdor. Yeah, I know. That's, all, he's, the, that's all of the custodies. Right. <laughs> but he's the one we spent the most time with. Yes. Um, yeah, Ushitan has like this back and forth with him where he's like, I pity you because you'll never live. Mm -hmm. Um and I don't know how much of, like, Constantine's character really gets an arc, but it is, like, I don't, I don't want to spoil it, because, like, a, Constantine is one of those characters that by 40k is just missing. Like, we don't know where he is, we don't know where he's gone, we don't know what he's doing. Yeah. Um, but he's not there anymore. And mm. it, it, by the end of the Horus Heresy, he's still at Terror. Like, he's still there, but he has learnt some shit, <laughs> you know? Right. And he has maybe, like, some personality now. Um, like, mm -hmm. I, don't, uh, I don't know how to put it without spoiling it. Um, That's fair. But, like, later on when the Primarchs come back, and we've seen a little bit of, uh, like, Valdor and Dawn talking in the Blood Games short, that like he doesn't get along with them. He like he doesn't like the the space marines all that much, and he doesn't like the primarchs to go with it, right? Like he doesn't think it's weird because like in this book we're also given that uh, the regular humans who are just like I must follow the prophet's will, and he's like I don't really have my own free will, and that's okay. That's Valdor as well, right? Like totally, yeah, yeah. Like let me investigate what drives me. I have no free. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and, but Valdor doesn't particularly like the Primarchs or the Space Marines, probably because they still have free will, right? That like yeah. he sees them as wildly reckless, powerful but reckless. Yeah, uh, and capable of doing something against the will of the Emperor, which is dangerous. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
And so we get a lot, there, there'll be a ton of like moments where custodies will only refer to the Primarchs as like, listen, seventh son, I'm not letting you in the throne room or whatever for this reason, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, so they have personality and conflicts and stuff. It's yeah. just not, it's just not a personal thing for them. No, it's within the context of what is the Emperor's will. Right. What keeps the Empress safe? Yeah. 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 That's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, one of the comments that I like to from this Reddit uh, post was Valdor sees 20 empty vessels mm -hmm. during the, uh, the attack that gets rid of the Primarchs. Mm -hmm. We already knew that. Yeah. But there are 21 Primarchs because of the twins Alpharius and Omegron. Mm, they, maybe they shared a pod. Yeah. That would be my guess. Probably. <laughs> Probably. I mean, they're twins, so they're twins. yeah, good call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the only answer I've got for you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Either that or the, the 20 first one was hidden behind the other one, and Valdor couldn't see it from where he was standing. <laughs> it was behind a structural support column. <laughs> <laughs> And we know what happened was time travel because bleh, I'm still annoyed at that. I, bleh, nah, that hard. I know you don't hate time travel as much as I do. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, we're also given some pretty interesting insight that the emperor thought his sons were dead. Like, oh, whoop, the whoop came in here and killed them all. Right. Well, well that sucks. I guess we'll just make do. And then just... later he comes back from like somewhere and he's like, you know, they might still be out there. We should go get them. Right. Hmm. Somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. Came back from somewhere. There. <sighs> yeah, okay. So I think that's it for this book. Yeah, that's Mc good. McCandlewire fails, blows herself up. Uh, no, not McCandlewire. Stardy blows herself up. McCandlewire lives, yeah. goes back to like her... Humble mm. beginnings to be like, I'm going to farm something here. Uh, doesn't know a thing about farming. But she does mm. have that, like, data packet that she gives to one of her servants and is like, you need to just keep this evidence somewhere and, like, leave. And she's like, okay, I'm going to spend a couple months and get a, a ship off planet and see where I can get with this information. Yeah. And then that's it. <laughs> It's like, got on a ship, the end. <laughs> got on the ship and then was like, well, maybe I should listen to it. Because <laughs> it's the, the, the order you're recording of her interview with Baldor. And it's like, this is neat that there's like this evidence that the Imperial military is in charge and will always be in charge. And like, I don't know. It's evidence that the Emperor will totally just butcher the Astartes when he no longer has a use for them. That's just hanging out there somewhere in the world. I don't think it's been used in any other book since. Like, this book kind of came out, like, four or five years ago. Right. So it hasn't had a chance to, but, like, as far as I'm aware, it. I have no idea where that information is for the rest of the lore. Yeah. Or if it gets used for anything. I mean, it could have... Just thrown more gasoline on the fire of the Horus heresy, right? Mm -hmm. Could have just been used as another thing for Horus to freak out about. Right. Yeah. But wasn't necessary, so hey. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it, it validates a lot of the space marines who are like, what will they do with us when there are no more wars? It's like, oh, these mm. guys are not just like fearing for their jobs. They're just like, oh, they have legitimate reason to be like, concerned about this they did they did but, but it turns out it's warhammer <laughs> and there will always be so war. congratulations you did it <laughs> you're a permanent hire we can't fire you yeah. <laughs> all right so that was valdor mm -hmm. valdor birth of the imperium good stuff yes all right, what's next? Ooh, that is, yeah, an interesting question, as always. To the, the thing. To the thing of a bob. Um, where are we up to? What do we want to read? This needs a dark mode. 
Maybe. Um, is there any particular legion or place that you want to pick up from, or you still have two legions you haven't met yet? Oh yeah, aware. let's do one of those. Let's try one of those. Um, Descent of Angels. Can you get that? Checking. By Mitchell Scanlon. Scanlon. Nope. Old wow, it doesn't even come up with anything. Whole lot of nothing, huh? Descent of... Nope. Okay, what else? Um, just make sure you're getting the right one. Put it in there. Um, deliverance Lost. Oh, Descent. Whoa. Did you descent. Think I... There are different words. Descent. Descent and... Descent. Descent. Descent of angels? Yeah. <laughs> I'll place a hold on that one. Okay. It's not super available, but I'm first in line, so I think it should come through. Okay. But as a backup, what else? Uh, we have a choice between Deliverance Lost, which is a... Uh, by Gav Thorpe. It's a Raven Guard novel, which I have not read. Or there's Scars by Chris Wright, but it also suggests we read Prospero Burns before we get there, so we'd have to go back and do the Thousand Suns and Space Wolves again. Right, right, which I was like, meh, about. Even though I hear that book's really good. So. Yeah, fine. Uh, Prospero Burns is available. Okay, what about Scars by Chris Wright? Because we could skip it. Once again. Yeah. <laughs> it's too generic. It's a very generic. generic book title. It's like, here are 8,000 books that have the name word Scars in it. Here's something with Scarred. No, that's not what I want. Hmm. The search is annoying. Chris what? Chris Wright. The, the guy we just finished reading a book from. Got it. W-R-A-I-G-H-T. Right. W-R-A-I? Yep. Oh. Correct him undo. Scars has a notify me option. I don't know if that means they don't have it yet. Oh. What does notify me mean? It's absolutely. Oh, they're not added to my libraries yet. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. That's not going to work. New Prospero Burns. Okay. I It'll mean, be fine. I'll survive. You'll, you'll manage? <laughs> yep. Okay. This is one of the books I haven't read, so I'm always excited since the, I think this is the second book we've done that I haven't read. Nice. Um, it's always fun. Yeah. Okay, deal. Got it. So I'll read Prospero Burns. Mm-hmm. And then I guess if the other one comes through, we'll talk about it. Yep. You want to do two books? Oh. Maybe. I don't know that I have it in me to read two whole books in a week. Just kidding. I, <laughs> I do that routinely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so maybe we'll do two this week. We'll see if it comes through or not. <clears throat> that means I'll have to do three because I already started my other book this week. Oh, no. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll manage. All right, good. Okay, well, we are over time. But we had a lot to talk about, so that's good. It's true. All right. Well, thanks uh, again for joining us for another edition of the Falcon Paladin Hour stream live on twitch.tv slash Somicron every week. We'll be back next week with more StarCraft 2 and Warhammer and maybe movie stuff. Who knows? Maybe some more bad movies that Somicron wants to watch. You can support the podcast <laughs> directly by going to patreon.com slash Somicron and just following instructions there or buying buying merch at falconpaladin.store. VODs also show up at youtube.com slash at Somicron. So check that out if you're a YouTube person. 
And yeah, until next time, as always, thanks for being here, and you take care of yourself. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.